congratulate uh, West Virginia. Um, they played really good today. Um, we didn't play uh, our best. I thought our effort was good. We just didn't have great uh, execution today and uh, had, had our chances early. Um, maybe punch it first score in rather than getting three. Uh, that didn't help us. And then we had a couple of opportunities uh, with good field position in there in the late in the first quarter, I believe it was, maybe early second. We didn't do anything with it. And, uh, and then, you know, we just weren't, we weren't very good on, on third down on, on defense. And they got a couple of big plays on third down that uh, got them a, a couple score lead and, and uh, we couldn't overcome it. So um, disappointed, but uh, like I told the guys after the game, you know, we're, we're all going to take ownership in this. Uh, coaches included, myself included, but we've got to be able to uh, wash it away quickly, guys, because uh, we, we have to get ready for a really good Oklahoma State team. Okay, we'll start here with Kellis. Hey, Chris, that's the first game all season. Deuce Vaughn hasn't uh, had a really big game. What did West Virginia do to keep him in check? Well, I think they tackle as well as any defense that we've played uh, this year, and I think that's the biggest key is they – didn't allow him to break outside contain. They didn't play much man coverage. Uh, they played more zone, which is what they've done this year. Uh, they've played really limited amount of man coverage. And so they were going to bracket him wherever he was and make sure they kept him in front. And um, I, I think they just did a really good job. And, and we've got to block a little bit better for him in those things. And, and uh, it, not, not every, we'd love to have every game where he makes explosive plays, but uh, give those guys credit on defense. And then not only that, you had to play the second half without Riley Moore. How much did that, I guess, compound things? How hard did that make it to create big plays? Well, it was it was a factor in the fact that Riley's, a, I think, an all-Big 12 player. But, uh, you know, we didn't get enough stops on, on defense that it wasn't probably going to matter. Uh, we would have liked to have had Riley uh, back for the second half. But, shoot, uh, that was, you know, affected a little part of our, of our offense. But uh, it was totality is what our – Problem was on all phases. We just needed to be better. Is, is Bradley doing okay? It's kind of hard to. It tell. was a back injury, um, but I don't know the severity of it. But it just it was kind of locked up on him when he got speared from behind in the back, um, and it just kind of locked up on him from what I understand. And they just couldn't get it loose, and so we weren't going to take any chances. All right, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, John. Yeah, Chris, just defensively, what, what to you were the biggest problems, particularly on, on third down today? Um, not making plays. Um, they did a good job uh, blocking our pass rush. We brought pressure a couple times. Excuse me, I was about to sneeze. Brought pressure a couple times, didn't get home, and uh, uh, didn't play really good man coverage. Uh, and we didn't pass some things off uh, in, in coverage as well. Just a, kind of a it wasn't the defensive line. It wasn't the linebackers. It wasn't the secondary. It was everybody. We just didn't play well enough on third down, didn't execute well enough. Uh, and we need to be better, but we need to be better as coaches on third down as well uh, as players. How crucial in a game like this did it become to not take advantage of some of the opportunities like first and goal at the two and the two drives that you had that started in their territory in the first half? Yeah, big time. Um, get, us, get up 7 nothing after – Turning the ball over in the first drive get, to get up seven, nothing, nothing would have been great. Instead, it's three. We do a nice job of keeping them from getting a touchdown and, and making it only three to three. Uh, but then we had numerous opportunities to uh, to try to get something going, and we and we just we struggled on, on short fields. And then once they got the big, we had like a third and nine, and, and brought pressure, and they picked it up and, and beat us in man coverage. And um, then they got up ten to three, and it just kind of uh, you could feel a little bit of air kind of come out just because of the fact that uh, we weren't moving the ball real well. And they were starting to get into a rhythm uh, offensively. And, and I, the quarterback for them played really well, and I thought he made a lot of really good reads. Thanks, Chris. Michael? Yeah, Chris, can you just describe where the breakdowns occurred on the uh, interception return for a touchdown that West Virginia made? Uh, I didn't see the entire play, but I don't know if the ball – got tipped. Um, I, I have no idea. I, I, once again, I didn't see it. I just saw the finish of the play with him running in there. So you'd probably have a better analysis than I would. Well, and defensively, it did seem like he played a lot more man-to-man -man and had some breakdowns in the secondary. How would you assess that before looking at film? Um, well, just because we're in single high doesn't mean we're in man-to-man. -man. We were playing some, some three-deep zone out of it as well. So um, 
you know, it, it uh, whether it was zone, whether it was man, they were they were doing a good job of, of kind of di dissecting both man and zone against us. Fitz. Hey, Coach, uh, what were the issues with tackling today? It just didn't seem like it was as in sync as it's been the last few games. Give their backs credit. We didn't – they were better than us. They they were able to get outside, contain a couple times, and, and run through some arm tackles. And, um, you know, bottom line, guys, all the questions you're answering are great. We need to be better. Um, and um, that's the challenge. We, we're going to learn from this. We got beat by a good football team today uh, that was – way better than us today. And uh, it's our job as coaches and as players to learn from it and um, make sure that it, that it either doesn't happen again or it limits what, what happened uh, today. But, uh, and we just didn't make plays. Uh, did they present Will with a bunch of stuff for some things that they, he'd never seen before or what was going no. on there? No, I, I think they, they're a zone coverage team and that's what they played. Um, they run a bunch of stunts up front. Some we picked up, some we didn't pick up, uh, and we didn't pick up, pick them up. They got guys in his face, and then uh, they broke on the ball extremely well. And a lot of tight coverage plays. Uh, we made some, you know, on, on some short uh, passes, but we didn't make enough in that intermediate zone uh, where they would break on the ball and it would be, you know, their hands, our hands, and, and they were aggressive. And I thought they broke on the ball exceptionally well in the back end. Thanks, Coach. Got time for the three hands uh, raised. Right. Hey, Chris, kind of as a follow-up to that, I, I was wondering, did, did you feel like it was more Will pressing the issue and just making some of the mistakes he hadn't made as, as a freshman, or was it? do you just have to give credit to West Virginia having a really good defense? Well, uh, we're, we're, we're for sure not going to hang this on Will Howard because uh, I think he's continuing to improve. I thought he made some really good throws. We have to be better for him, and we have to be better uh, with a lot of the things that we're doing offensively. I mean, we got to block better, we got to catch ball better, we've got to uh, do a lot of different things. And, and maybe there's a, a throw or two that Will wishes he had back. Um, that's every quarterback in the country. And the one thing that I'm not worried about is Will's confidence, Will's any of that stuff. This kid's this kid's got that it factor, and uh, uh, he, he'll be just fine. And I guess, Chris, I, I need to be better at asking questions because I guess I didn't mean for it to sound like I was blaming him for the loss. I just, I, I, mean, I don't I, think you were, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I think just, you were. I just was only referring to the, the – the, I just want to make sure that we don't throw this loss on a, on a quarterback when we yeah. were all guilty of everything, offense, defense, and coaches. And I didn't think you were, Ryan. I just want to make sure that we aren't. Yeah, and then I did want to say uh, and ask this maybe the one bright spot. Do you think Malik catching that touchdown could this be something that he can build off over the rest of the season? Yeah, that was great. And there's an example of of they were coming down on on Philip in, in kind of the uh, hook or dig window, and they kept playing aggressively, and and uh, we were able to get over the top on them uh, in the first half. And I thought that was a big touchdown for our confidence going into going into the half, and he made a big time play. Um, Problem right after that was, I think we got a field goal on their first drive of the third quarter and took about six minutes. So we couldn't get off the field. There, there, there and again lies some of the problems that we just couldn't get off the field on third down on defense to give our offense more opportunities. Our offense needed to do more. We didn't give them enough opportunities on defense. Thank you, Chris. You bet. Mitch. Uh, Coach, obviously it was not pretty on either side of the football, but was there a guy that stood out to you that did have a good game or had a consistent game? I thought Drew Wiley played his tail off. I thought Drew Wiley was really, really good. I thought he was very, very disruptive. I thought Daniel Green played really well from the naked eye of things I saw. Um, and uh, that, that's good to see. But Drew is having an all-conference season, and I, I'm really happy with the way he's playing right now. Appreciate you uh, bringing that up so I could mention it. Last one here, Mitch. Mitchell. Hey, Coach. Now, um, coming into today against Lady Brown, one of the top guys in, in the Big 12, obviously just kind of precursor to what you guys are gonna, should be expecting over the, the weeks coming. Of course, the Chuba Hubbard coming up next and then Brees Hall down the line. So how did you how did you feel like you guys played against one of the elite big, uh, 12 running backs? And how, kind well, of how we, does that look moving forward? Yeah, we, we need to be better. Uh, we need to tackle better. We need to hit our fits better. And, and you guys are right. We, we know the gauntlet that's in front of us. We know what's in front of us with 
uh, teams that have really good running backs, teams that have really good quarterbacks, teams that have really good defenses. It's called the Big 12, and we've just got to continue to improve. And, and, uh, and we're excited about what our start was, but by no means did we relax and think, boy, we've arrived. Our, our kids don't feel that way. They have, they've never felt that way. We just have to be better. And, and today, a better team beat us, and we know down the line we're going to face some really talented teams coming up. Now we, we know we've heard you in practices talk about the confidence you guys have in Will Howard, but coming into today where he throws those, those three interceptions, what kind of things were you seeing on the sidelines that gives you even more confidence moving forward? Uh, just his demeanor, the way he carries himself um, at all times, the way he doesn't get all panicked when he does throw a pick. Um, he'll be fine. I'm not worried about Will. He'll be all right.